Hi, I'm Julia and welcome to the Rogue Academy. I'm a Rogue Artist Ensemble member and today I'm going to take you through the steps of how to tell a story using a mask. Masks have been used for thousands of years to help people tell stories. So today we're going to go through some of the steps of how to pick a story, how to create a character, and how to make a mask that can help you tell your story. All right, let's talk about the materials you're going to need for this project. You're going to be able to find these materials around your house, like paper. I found this in the mailbox. I finally found something to do with all of this mail. Some paper bags or just recycled paper from around your house. Some tape. Oh, this part is exciting. Usually for paper mache, you would use glue and water. And you can do that, of course, if you have glue. But if you're out of glue, you can go into your kitchen and find some flour. Win the gold medal. You're an expert. And I'm going to teach you how to make your paper mache using flour. Step one, pick a story. How do you pick a story? Well, you can start by thinking of a story that you really like or a story that means something to you. I decided to choose a story from Grimm's Fairy Tales and I picked Little Red Riding Hood. I picked this story because it's a story that we all know and it's a story that teaches us something really important about how to trust our instincts when we're in danger and how to stay safe. So, to tell the story of Little Red Riding Hood, I am going to need a wolf. There's something I have to tell you about this project. It's gonna get a little messy and it might take a couple of days. But that's okay, because if we work together or if we're patient with ourselves, we can create something really special that we're going to be able to be proud of and use a lot in our storytelling. Now, the other thing I should tell you, after we finish our paper mache project, we might need some decorative materials like paints um, or things to glue on to help um, bring the mask to life, but we don't need to worry about that just yet. We're going to focus now on how to make the paper mache mask. To make my wolf mask, I want to start by thinking about the design and what I want it to look like. It's going to need to fit on a face, so I'll start by finding the eyes. I'm going to take a piece of paper and a pencil, and I'm going to put the paper in front of my face like this. And then I'm gonna take my pencil. You might need some help here. Be careful, you don't wanna hurt yourself. And I'm gonna help find my eyes on the paper. So, here we go. Chick, chick, chick. Chick, chick, chick. And this is going to help me know where the eyes go later. So this is going to become important later on after we make our mask. Now, I'm gonna draw a little picture a little design of how to make the wolf. Now, the way I'd like to do this is sometimes I want to search an image online, look for an image that I can draw from. So I looked up pictures of wolves and I drew a picture. This picture, it's only to help me know how to make the mask because the eyes I know are going to need to be a certain distance apart from each other. And I know that I'm gonna to want to make shapes of the ears and the shape of a nose. So this is really just a reference point to help me when I'm sculpting, but the real, the real art making is going to come using our hands right now. Let's get into it. Let's take our paper and start sculpting. 
to make the sculpture of our wolf, we're going to take paper and crumple it up. And we're gonna start using some tape to help make the shape. Now, I'm sitting here at a table, but to be honest with you, I really prefer to work on the floor. So let's get down there. Woo! Woo! <laughs> that was fun. All right, so here it is, the sculpture that will be the base of my mask. Now it's time to get started on that paper mache. Ready? Here we go. Okay, so here, as you can see, I've got um, some scraps laid out to help keep my working space clean. I have my um, paper ready for the paper mache, and I'm experimenting here because I don't want all of this paper to stick to the paper mache. I want the nose and the ears to stay strong inside of the mold, so they're going to be um, permanent, but I'm gonna want all of this to come out once I'm done with the paper mache so that I can fit it on my face. So here I'm ready for the first layer. I've got my strips of paper, I've got um, some scraps down for my working area and my paste. So what I'm doing is I'm just dipping the paper in the paste and then I'm taking my two fingers and I'm, oh, whoops, it ripped, but that's okay because I can still use this piece on maybe um, a smaller detailed spot. There's a lot of paste here now, but that's okay. Um, so I'm just cleaning it off, right? I'm pulling all this down so there's not quite so much. And then I'm gonna find a place for this to go. And you can see I'm doing, I'm kind of going back and forth between going straight across and some crisscross. With this first layer, I wanna first cover the whole, um, the whole, sculpture um, and then I'm gonna go back in and do a second layer after this dries so my first layer look at that nice my first layer is complete. Um, I'm just gonna check it to make sure. I actually might do maybe a few more pieces back here. I'm leaving this open because I'm gonna wanna take this part out so that it can fit on my face. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's all covered. And I'm gonna, it took me about 45 minutes to do this first layer. And now I'm going to let it dry and wash my hands. I decided to use um, the paper bag for my second layer um, to give it these. This is going to be a little stronger, and I want to make sure that it's really solid. Now that this has dried, I'm going to do my second layer using this paper bag. This is dry and um, you know I really like the, the, the texture that is starting to come out and the, the color but um, I, I realize that my wolf I, is going to be a white wolf and I don't have a lot of white paint so I found this white paper bag so I'm going to try using this and see how, how it looks for my third layer. Mm -hmm. 
Drying really nicely. Just waiting for it to get fully dry back here. It's almost ready. Oh, it might be ready to start to, to cut into now. All right, so here we are with my almost finished mask. It's now time for me to start to cut into it, take the mold out, create the holes for the eyes so I can eventually put it on and see through it. Um, and I also am going to start the process of decorating now. Um, so I've been thinking about what I want my wolf mask to look like and I'm gonna kind of play as I do it. And um, it can be, this part is up to your own interpretation of how you want to create the character. You'll see that um, the way that this paper mache dried is a little uneven and that's good because with a mask, you want it to look different from each angle so that it can create a different feeling or a different expression. For this next part, you're going to need some scissors. I'm going to use an X-Acto knife. Um, if you have one in your home, that would hopefully mean that you have someone that can help you to use it. I don't recommend using these without someone who really knows how to do it. And even scissors, please ask someone to help you as you start to cut open the, the mask. All right, here I go. favorite markers, um, some materials that I found around the house with some glue for some texture, and I might use some um, simple paints, but I'm not even sure I'm going to go there yet. dry and you can see I use some doilies to make the whiskers 
on the face. I did want to start simple and then I got a little carried away. I had a little fun with some charcoal to shade it in and a little bit of paint. The decoration is really up to you. I get a little excited. I even put a little sparkle in the eye um, because I was having fun with it. And that's the idea is that we can have some fun and decorate it however feels right to us. Um, sometimes we have to tell ourselves that's enough. And that's what I did. I stopped myself from going too far. And I found a string around the house. This was, I pulled it off of a, an old dress um, and just tied it in, these little holes here. And now it's time for me to try it on and see what it's like to become the wolf. Oh, and I wanted to say also, remember um, at first I was thinking that the wolf should be really scary looking, but as I learned more about the story and realized that Little Red Riding Hood doesn't notice at first and that the wolf is able to disguise itself as the grandmother, that's why I chose to use this doily to kind of give the idea that the wolf is in disguise and I wanted to put a little sparkle in the eye to give a sense that this is maybe somebody that you might trust in the right light. So let's give it a try, here we go. Good day, Little Red Riding Hood. Where are you going so early in the morning? No, oh, but just look at the flowers all around you. And that's it. That's how you can create a mask character from items just found around your house. This was my paper mache wolf mask for Little Red Riding Hood, and now I'm ready to put on my play to tell a story. Um, I hope this inspires you to come up with your own idea. Um, think of a story that you really like, a story you want to tell, and remember that you don't have to know exactly what it will look like when you start. Um, with this, it really kind of became what it was as I went, and I think that's part of the fun of being creative. So thank you for watching, and remember to keep... And remember, keep... Dreaming and scheming. The other way around. And remember, keep scheming and dreaming. Thank you.